Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my tutorials in Nextflow for Bioinformatics. In today's video, I will show you how to write a Nextflow script to be formed in our application, the tool Procker. So you need to make sure that you have Nextflow and Procker installed on your PC. If you don't have them installed, just make sure you have Panda or Mamba or Macomba installed. So you will use one of these to install the tools. The instruction for installing the tools can be found in the description box. So just use those videos in the description box to help you set up your PC. Preferably, I would recommend you have Mamba or Macomba installed because those ones comparatively are faster when it comes to installing packages. All right, they are faster compared to the classical Panda package manager. All right, of course, you should also have a Linux system and you can also run this activity using. And our whole system so let's proceed so let's shift to this and then continue okay so let's do this so this is the script that i'm going to use if you want the script you can tell the attention box to download it but i'm going to take you through them one by one and explain the commands okay some of you may be doing this so it's important to learn how this flow works so i will explain a couple of things to you and then you can run the script so let's proceed so let's go to the terminal and then continue the exercise so on the terminal what we are going to do next is to install the tools we will install Nestle and broker okay we will use mamba but if you have panda you can just type panda but i'll use mamba so i'll say mamba okay so i will create an environment and install the tools in it i repeat i'm going to create an environment and install the tools in that environment so let's continue okay so i will say mamba create dash n annotation so i'm creating an environment called annotation and then i'll add channels okay but before that let me say that if you have conda just replace mamba with conda that's fine but i'll use mamba okay now i'm going to specify channels i'll say that c by conda that c Panda Forge that C defaults. These are the channels, and I'll specify the tools. So I have next flow, I have broker. So that's how it's going to be done. So let's execute this command to install the tools. Okay, so I have them. So Mamba is going to download the packet disassembly box. All right, so let's type Y to confirm. Let's hit enter. And then let's wait for everything to get installed for us. Okay, we have installed the tools. So what we need to do next is to activate the environment. All right, and then we can test. After that, we will download the example data, so don't worry. So if you're installed using Conda or Mamba, then you have some instructions are telling you how to activate the environment and then use it. So in my case, it says to activate the environment, I have to use Quanda activate application. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. So I'll clear the screen and I'll say Quanda activate annotation. Okay. Now if you do it this way, you notice that I have this error. Okay. So this error came because I didn't give the right name. So this is also to let you know that the name that you use to set up the environment, you should specify the exact same name when you are activating. Okay, so here you see I have A N N N instead of A N N. Okay, so I'll have to do it the right way. So I'll say Panda activate annotation. So this one should work. Okay, perfect. So now that's it. So you should always pay attention to the spellings okay of the names that you use it's very very important okay so let's proceed so now i can test i'll start with next flow so i'll just say next flow okay like this so once i do it like this something should come up okay so there's this okay you can also do some further tests but i assume that up to this point everything is fine okay so we can proceed so let's clear the screen Let me do this way rather. Yeah. So it's clear. C L E A R. Okay. Yeah. Now let's also test broker. So I'll say broker. Yes. So this will list some stuff here. I can also do 
broker that's just version you see the version i can also say broker that's just list the b list will list databases that are on my system basically okay, so i have the data so i am ready to go so we can proceed so okay so now we have completed the tests okay for netflow and then broker so now we need to download the example data so that's what we are going to do next okay so before we even down the example data let's create a directory and then cd into it it's a working directory we need to create a directory because we have to assume this a new project so we need to make sure that we have a separate product for it. so i'll say make that and i'll give it a name so i can say genome annotation like this you can use any name of your choice i repeat at this stage you can use any name of your choice that's fine to create your folder or you can even say annotation or anything is fine so just make sure you have an appropriate name or i just say genome annotation that's also fine so just use a simple name to make your life easy okay i'll say genome underscore annotation this is what i'll use and then i'll cd into it perfect so now i am going to download the example data so i have an example data here one of my virtual reports there's a page and i'll leave the link to this page in the description box so when you are here you will see this file here sequences 11 20 zip. so this is what you are going to so it's a zip file that contains five sequences so to download click it and when you click it you'll be sent to this page so when you are here come to this side if you want to download click this download button here but I will download the antenna, so I'll copy the link. So I'll come to raw, I'll right click, then I'll go to copy link. And then I'll move to the terminal. Perfect. So on the terminal, I'll send the widgets and I'll paste the link there. And I'll execute the command. So this will download the file for me. It's a small file, so it shouldn't take much time. Now I'm done. So I'll clear the screen. I'll do an ls and I'm going to find the file there. Sequences 11, 20, 20, Now I'm going to unzip it. Okay. This will down the first one. So if I do an ls, I'm going to find the files there. These are first eight files. I have five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I can also say ls star dot first a. It gets the files. All right. So these are first eight sequences. Okay. Now let's do this. We need to organize this file. So I'll create another directory and then move the passive files into it. So I'll say make the sequences. Or you can also say context, whichever one you use, it's a name. So make sure you use an appropriate name. Okay. So I'll just say sequences. And then I'll move them to so I'll say MV star dot first A. I'll move them to sequences. So if I say ls, I'll see sequences. If I ls into sequences, I'm going to find my first A files there. Okay, so this is how we do it. All right. Okay. So now let's proceed. So now we have the tools installed. We have the example data. So it's time to build the next flow script for this. Okay. So let's do this. I repeat. Now we have next flow installed. We have broker installed. We also have the example list that we will use. We have them here. We have five sequences. So we are going to build an extra script to help us do this. We have five sequences. Okay, so five files. And so basically, if it's a class car, a batch approach we are going to use, you need to write a script that will take each of these files and then annotate the sequence in that file. Okay, so with Nestflow, it's help you to automate and then scale your projects. And so I'm going to show you how to write a script to make your life easy when it comes to handling multiple files. All right, so that's what we are going to do next. So let's proceed. So let's first clear the screen. Okay, and then let's do an analysis again. And then let's now write our Nestflow script. That's what we are going to do. So I'm going to open a text file okay on the terminal and then i'll put in the scripts that's what i'm going to do okay 
Now, for those who don't know what broker is, that's what you're going to see, by the way. You can read more about the tool here. Okay, I should have made mention of that earlier. And by the way, I have a separate tutorial that shows how to run broker on a terminal. Okay, without next flow. So as a beginner, I also encourage you to watch that video if you want to learn how to use broker. Okay, I'll leave the link to this page in the description box. So there are example commands you can use here. Okay, but I'll show you some example. The will learn just an example, and then from there, we can now come and learn more from this GitHub repo. It is the GitHub repo for the developer. So let's get back to the tech. Okay. Now it's time to write our script. So I'll say nano. I prefer to use nano to open my text file, but you can use vi also for any text editor, but I'll use nano. Okay. And I'll say annotate .nf. Okay, so this is my next first step. But you can use any name of your choice. Okay, but I prefer to use this one here. And so that I know what this script is going to be. So now, no. and then I'll start. Okay, but I'll open another terminal because I'll show you some stuff here. Okay, so the first thing I'll do, okay, is to issue this command. Let me just come here. I'll say params dot context, or you can also say sequences. Okay, any of them is fine, but let's just use context. Okay, or sequences. You know, let, let me just say sequences. So that at least the same. Okay, so sequences. And I'll say equals. I'm now defining where to find the files. That's what I'm doing now. Okay, let me just do this. So this is a comment. The sequences or context. Whichever name that you use, that's fine. So this how you add comments. Okay, so this anything in between this and this is a comment. Okay, now I'll come back to this. So parent or sequences. Now I'll bring your quotes and I'll say sequences slash star dot first a. There's a wild card and I'll end with a single quote. Okay. So sequences slash star dot fast a will return all the files that end with fast a. So if it was to be the normal bash terminal, okay. Let's ls first sequences. If I say ls sequences slash star dot fast a, I'm going to get my files. Okay. So this command, the output is what you also get here. So this command will make available all the files for us. It will make available to this flow all the files, these files. So that is why we define it this way. Okay, so this also allows us to process all the files one by one. Now we need to do this. We now have to add what you call a process. So processes are tax basically. Okay, so we need to define the kind of tax, and that is annotation. So I'll say process. And then I'll say annotate. Okay, that's the name. But sometimes you can also use an uppercase. Okay, so any name should be fine. Just make sure you are consistent. But I'll just do it this way. I'll say annotate. So this is the name of the task. And then for task, it should be between or it should be in curly brackets. So you open it and then you end it. And then in between, you put in your commands. So that's what we are going to do now. In between, we have to put in our commands. So I'll start with this. I'll say publish. Ah, okay. So this publish that here will be used to create a directory where the files will be saved. Or where the files, yeah, where the files are going to be saved. Okay. So this directory, we don't need to have it created. Next flow automatically creates that for us, right? So there's a so publish that I bring my brackets, I bring a double quotes. I'll say annotation. This time I'll use uppercase annotation. I'll end it and I'll say comma. I'll say mode. Hold on. Copy. Yes. 
So publish that is a directory that will be used to store the outputs and then that's the name annotation and then the mode copy here means that the files will be generated in the next flow default directory and then a copy of them will be made into this directory so don't worry it's a copy so later we will clean the files and remove all those other necessary files so don't worry now it's a copy because sometimes you want to process files okay different files in different states so if they are in that next flow directory it makes it easier all right so that's why you're making a copy but you can also choose to use move if you're not going to use the file again in this flow you can also say move so that would be more like that's a piece but i'll use copy just to be safe so that is it now let's do this let's define the inputs I'll say inputs colon then the next line one two three I'll say path and I'll say from take path all right now for path I will show you all the links that you can use to read more about these uh, variables and data types all right so just to the so you find links to Necessary to run that's explain a couple of distance for you. So that will make life easy. But for now, I want you to follow what I'm doing and make sure to reproduce it and then later you can check all those other ones. We need to also specify an output. I'll say outputs. The next line, okay. I'll say path again. And this time double quotes, star double quotes. That means everything. Because we may not know. The type of file that we generated of course i know but sometimes there are lots okay so there are lots instead of specifying the one but you can just say start and it's everything so that also works right? but sometimes you can also specify specific files or specific file types that's fine now let's move to the next line and that is scripts we bring a colon the next line we bring three double quotes one two three and then another three double quotes again like this and then in between you will specify our command that's what we are going to do okay so i will say broker okay and i will say dash dash kingdom it is just a basic command but there are more things you can add okay so when you check the broker documentation there are other options you can add i will I'll let you know all those steps for now let's keep it simple so that's just kingdom that's bacteria and by the way broker by default assumes that the kingdom is bacteria okay and you can change it if let's say you are dealing with viruses you can change it as well but i just want to let you know that you can specify the kingdom here okay if it's different from bacteria you can specify it but with bacteria you don't need to even specify this at all so let's keep it this way all right now let's specify something i'll say dash dash prefix and then i'll come to this you'll notice i define config files so then the inputs okay so it's more like you define let's say for example let's say config file equals and i'll say sequences slash let's say m48 okay so it's like me assigning the file names to that variable that is what this config file here means okay so when i come here the prefix ideally the prefix should be the names okay, the sample names or the file names minus the extension dot fast a okay so i'll do that here so i'll say dollar config file dot sample name now we'll close it to another curly bracket so this allows us to strip the extension so in this case that first a to strip it and then that will be the name for the output files so all the output files you have for a particular sample will have a name so for example if it's ar process 5 then all the output files will have ar process 5 in their names in addition to their respective extensions so that's what it is now let's add something else. Yeah, specify the prefix so we can say dash dash out there. 
And the same thing is what I'll add the dollar quantity file for simple name. That means a directory will be created. So, for example, if it's AR forces file directory, that will be created as AR forces file. And in that directory, you will have the output files specified or placed in those directories. Okay, so that's what we have. So that is it. Now we can add additional steps. Okay, there are things that you can add also, but for now we can keep it simple like this. There are more things you can add, I repeat, but this is to I want us to keep things simple. This is a basic to have to get you started, and you can add more things to your worker commands. Okay, of course, if you want more commands, let's come to the GitHub page and then check. Or you can also contact me if you want more to do some broker documentation. I will show you how to do that. But for now, let's keep it simple like this. Okay, now after specifying your options, what you need to do next is to specify the quantity file or the sequence. So in this case, it's going to be dollar quantity file. Okay, this is it. I think I'll reduce the font size a bit so that we have everything on the same line. That should help us. Yeah, 21 should be fine. Yeah. This should be fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we have everything in here. So, params or sequences is used to specify where the sequences are or the files are. Basically, we define our process, which in this case refers to tax. We specify a directory where the output file should be saved. We specify the inputs and outputs, and then we specify the script. So, this becomes our final command. So that's it. Now in this flow, you need to add one more thing to it, and that is workflow. So workflow will act as the activator. So this is what will activate the process, and then in the workflow, we will specify which task to execute, i.e. annotation. So I will specify this, I'll say workflow, and here to we give a curly bracket, and in that curly bracket, we specify what we need to. Now with next flow, if you are specifying inputs, you need to use channels. All right, channels. We can read more about them here. I think I show them here. Let's see. Yeah, I'll leave the link to this page also in the description box. All right. So there are different channels, but we we'll use just one of them. So I'll come back and then show you that. So what we are going to use is the on class. Okay. So I'll say contig underscore ch. So you can even say sequence ch. I want us to be consistent. So I can say sequence underscore ch equals and I'll say channel dot from path. And then I'll put them in brackets. I'll say params dot sequences. So this is what we are putting here. And then the next line, I'll say rotate I'll specify the process into brackets sequence that's for ch so this is it this is everything we need for now okay what's next for the other things you can add as well so for example you can add the control here so that if those files do not exist exception is true okay, but for now let's keep it simple and try to understand this and then later on you can add up Okay, so let's just leave things this way. Okay, so now everything is done. So all that we need to do is to exit and then save changes. Okay. So this is what we need to do. We are going to exit and save changes. Okay. And before I let me say that with proper tool, you can specify CPUs. Let's go back here. So CPUs will make your tax run faster if you have more computing power you can add that to it i just want to show you that one cpus the options are somewhere here okay i think i'll show it when we are yeah so you have it here so cpus is somewhere here let's check yeah you can specify now what cpus to use okay so if you have more cpus for example, if I work on a Linux cluster, a computer cluster, then you can increase the number of CPUs. The default is 8, 
that you can input to pay up more computing power. Okay, but for now, I didn't specify that because I want to use the default settings. So let's save the changes. And then let's do an LS. We are going to find our SQL script here. So now we need to execute it. So to run it, we say next flow. Run. We say annotate .nf like this. So let's execute this command. Right, so once you do that, the next flow will take the paths one by one and then annotate them for us. So what we have to do is to wait. Now you will see that it says what? Process annotates zero of five. Okay, so it's now starting. It's has seen that there are five tasks to perform, i.e. five paths. Okay, that's why I have five. You can see that here. One, two, three, four, five. So that's why you have what? Five here, zero of five. So all the things are being processed. And you should note that depending on the computing power, broker will run faster or may not. Okay, so if you specify the CPUs, then things can work faster for you. But nevertheless, with the configuration you are using, you can run it on a normal laptop, and that should be fine. Okay, so don't worry about trying to increase the CPUs. This one should be fine. Yeah, that it takes some time, but just be patient and then wait for it to be done. So let's wait for it to be done for us. Okay, next flow has completed its work. Right, so we have the notification, it says completed at this time. Took about 13 minutes, all right? But it can be faster if you have higher computing power. I'm using my normal laptop. So let's take a look at the output files, okay? We will come back to this particular interface, but I'm just using this other terminal here because it's still in the same working directory, right? So I'll do an LS, I'm going to find annotation. Right, so this is the output, so if I LS into it, I'm going to find the output. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So each of them will have output path. So let's ls into let's say AR process five. So I'll see some files here. So we have a total of four files for each. Okay. Now the description of each of the output files can be found here. Let's check it out from the broker page here. Let's see. Yeah, so we have the description here. Okay, so each of them you have them here like this. So you can just look at the description and then just pick the one that you want. Okay. So for now, let's do this. Okay, so we can even take a look at it using our file manager. So I'll just open mine for you to see. There's the output file. So we have the individual files here. So this is one of them. So there is a summary file that you can use to take a peek into the predicted features. So that one is a .csv file, this one here. You can open this using the spreadsheet software. So for example, you can have it and you can check the features. This here, so I can just check it out by looking at the different types of features predicted. So I have CDS, tRNA, rna tmRNA. And here you see that there is no genes. Okay, so you can add that information. So we will go back to Proca. Okay. And then do this. We are going to rerun it. By this time, we are going to add the gen features. I will just go back. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove this. And we are going to rerun Proca. And this time we we'll add something else because we need to get a predicted genes. Okay. So it's important we look at that. Okay, so I'll just come back to this one here. And we are going to modify it anyway. So I'll just clear everything. And I'll remove the annotation directory again because I'll generate a new output. So I'm going to remove this permanently. That's why I'm using dash R. So you should be careful when you see dash R and the R because the change cannot be yes. And I just want to move because I'm going to generate a new data set. Okay, so I remove this and then here too, I'm going to remove everything. I'll just say next flow. Clean dash L. 
to force the cleaning of everything in this way. So this is the default uh, which that next flow saves files into. Okay, so I'm just trying to remove everything and then we'll run so that we have a new data generated. So I'll edit, I'll do an ls first and I'll edit the nf again, the anti.nf and add some additional information. So we are going to add the gems to it. But first, let's add something else here. I'll add this tag. I'll say tag double quotes. I'll say dollar. I'll bring curly brackets. I'll say pointed file. Okay, so when I say tag, so this will be used to display the file. That's a slim process at that point in time. Okay, so this command will help us see that. So to even help to look at the progression or the progress. Now I'll come to the proca command itself. I'll add something here. Okay, I'll just do a space and I'll say dash dash add gens. Okay, so that we can have the predictor gens also being displayed for us. Or let me just say we have the predictor gens included in the output. So that's why I'm adding this one here. Then let's scroll down to the annotated sequence stage, let's add this. We just say dot view. So then the outputs are also displayed for. So this is the modification that we are making. I think this is the modification that we have made. First, I add a tag. And when I come to proca, I add this option here, that dash add gens. And when I come to annotate, I say dot view in addition to the command here. So I'll save changes. Then we'll run again. Okay. You can also add the CPUs, but I'll still leave it because I just want to keep it simple. But you can add that option to speed up broker. So now we'll say next flow run. Now say annotate. But anyway, let's execute this command. Okay. So now I have to wait for next flow to complete its work. So now because we added the tab option, what will happen is that the file that has been processed at that point in time will be displayed. So we see that here. So now P10 has been processed. P10 has first A. So all the files that are going to be processed will be displayed for so that we know what has happened. So we have to wait for everything to get down for us. This will also take us about 30 minutes. Okay, one thread. So just wait and make sure this flow completes this way. Okay, the normal annotation has been completed, so we can see the output here. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so because we added a tag and then a dot view, we're able to see the outputs, right? So we have everything here. Okay, so that's good. I will switch to this one and then we'll do an ls again to see our uh, if we have ls into it. I'm going to find it there. Okay, now I'll shift to the file manager. So I'll move there. So I see my files here. I'll move to this one and open the summary file again. I saw it somewhere here. Like this one. So let's open it again. Yeah, okay, and this time when we check, we will see the things as well. See them here. So, okay, so there's it. Okay, so we have it here. So we can see them here. And we can even count. So we have predicted gens 2796, CDS 2715, etc. So the same can be said for the others. Okay, you can open and then check. Okay. But the information we have here are for different samples. Okay, so ideally what you want to do is to combine them into a single file. Okay, and then you can do that and then do the compile. So you can use Python, for example, to do this. I think I have one. I'll show you how it's done. Let's look at this. So I have a Python script that I use, which is this one here. So since I have my proc annotation outputs in this directory, what I have to do, let's just come back here. Let's do an analysis to see the scripts. So I'm going to execute the scripts, which is this one, this Python script. So I'll say Python. 
get anode stats dot pi and I'll specify the directory which has the proper attributes. And I'm going to execute it. When I execute it, it will aggregate the reports, the reports in the summary file for me. I'm going to get something like this. If you do an ls now, you find that an output file has been generated, which is this one. Let's open that with a spreadsheet software. So I'll open it here. So we are going to get something like this. So we have then CDS. I mean the predicted features are here, and then the count for each of the samples that we have. We have five samples or five different sequences. Let me put it that way. So we have the number for each of them here. So here you can do your comparison. Okay. Now if it's a table, you can actually generate a visualization after updates, and this can help you to identify patterns easily. Alright, so you can generate bar charts or you can even use circles to generate some visualization that will help you better understand your data and then also help you to compare and help you to identify parts but there's something that we are going to talk about in another video i will show you another visualization before we end the video but for now let's get back here there's something else we have to do here so once you are done you can do a cleanup in next flow that's what i want to show you and by the way the script this python script so let's go back this Python script here, if you want the link to download it, it's also an expression, but you can download and then just use it. All right, so you can also download and then let me explain what it does. That's fine. So let's get back here. Okay, so once you are done with your next flow activity, it's important to do a cleanup. Okay, remember when we were using the publish that we use copy, so we still have duplicates of the outputs which will occupy space. So you can do a cleanup. So clean up. Will help us remove unnecessary files or unwanted files okay so with a cleanup you can do a false cleanup to clean all the runs or you can specify a particular run then next for clean files associated with that run for example the run we just did is called astonishing fragment so we can do a cleanup with that so to do a next flow cleanup okay you just say next flow okay like this i'm just typing it here okay anyway i'll do it this way i'll just do a copy first i'll just clear the screen and i'll see next flow clean and i'll paste the run there and i'll see that f before clean so when i execute it it's going to clean the file for me so these are the files that have been cleaned now one, two, three, four, five. So the files here represent the rock outputs. Okay, so these ones have been removed. So using this approach allows you to clean specific runs. But if you want to clean everything, then that's where you use next flow clean dash f. So this will clean everything. Okay, but you should be careful when using clean dash f. Probably you have different runs, so you want to clean them one after the other. But if you are sure of what you are doing, you can clean everything at once. Or if you know the name of the run, for example, this one here, then you can also use that to clean or remove the files. But if you do an LS, you are still going to find the word directory, but you are, you are not going to find the outputs in it. Okay. So if it's like this, then you can still remove it using your Linux command. So that's something that you can do. Right. So that's it. Now back to our outputs. Okay. So we have our annotation. We look at the summary, we aggregated it. So there's something you can start with. But if you want more details, then you can look at the individual files and then just check them out. Okay, I also showed you where to get the description of the files and then extract them. All right, so that's something you can do. Now for GenBank files, I have tutorials that show how to view GenBank files and extract information. This is a GenBank file. DBK. You can use Python or R to extract content from it. Of course, and to us using Python, so you can check the description box to find you. That show you how to read the bank files and also how to read fast A files. So some of them are fast A files. You can also read them. Okay, so that's it. Now, when it comes to annotation, you can also visualize them like this. Okay, so what you need to do is to extract the information. Then you can use tools like circles to visualize them. Then you can also use tools like Artemis to also give me visualizations like this, which 
uh, it's sometimes called genome map so just some that you can do so if you're interested we learn how to generate visualizations like this and i suggest you check this playlist right here